in the college football world, there's Alabama. You got a lot of guys, not a lot, some guys hitting the portal. So uh, even with a program as stout as Alabama, when you have a coaching change, you're gonna have you're gonna have changes. Ch -ch -ch changes. Yeah. Surprising at that too. Um, but you know, sometimes the a new head coach may not meet the you know personalities of the guys that uh, are there and they're looking for something better and sometimes the portal's good for you you know because it gets peer, kids out of the way that don't want to be there per, per se or um don't necessarily want to buy into what you're trying to accomplish but i can't imagine coach DeBoer changing much at alabama other than philosophically offense maybe <laughs> Yeah, now all they do, uh, Caleb Downs, a second-team All-American in his freshman season, has official uh, has entered the portal. That's now that's a loss, um, yeah. but they're going to be they're going to gain, uh, they're going to lose, they're going to gain. So I, I, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be the same. Yeah, and I think there'll probably be some kids from Washington that will jump in the portal since they did not. Uh, move up grub the oc uh to the head coaching position which Boy, was that was some there was some uh that was not exactly well received by grub i don't think no and i i don't know if he was led to believe if there was a change that you know um you know the general rule of thumb if you have success you promote from within and i think that sometimes that gets a little bit overplayed um but I don't, if I remember, serves me correct. I'm not sure that's the same AD that hired Kellen there at uh, Washington. Uh, it's maybe not. Was, she, their AD is at, at USC now. Yeah. She, and so you get a new, you know, person in there and he looks at it and, you know, I didn't hire this staff. I kind of inherited the staff. And so he went, you know, hired, you know, get Jed Fish from Arizona. I don't know about that hire. I mean, he's done well at Arizona. Um, I can understand the move that he thinks that he's moving to a top tier program, but they're moving to the Big Ten, and they may not be a top tier program. I mean, as Michigan proved, so. Um, some inter I mean, there's always that interesting hire, move, uh, feeling of uh, overlooked. I think that's the way I would say it for Grubb's uh, release on the social media sites and things of that nature. But it just wasn't meant to be. And the hard part that I hate about this stuff, and it, it, it's, it's never easy, is you got a place like Alabama where you know they've had tremendous amount of success, and you get a new coach, so those guys are probably all out of a job now. Um, and then you got the guys at Washington, but he's not taking everybody from Washington. So theoretically, here's the guys that go to the national championship as coaches, and all of a sudden, an assistant coach that was a part of that staff is no longer employed. <laughs> no, but ironically, there are going to be. I, yeah, I sent out a tweet that was slightly wrong. That's had six, six former IU staffers. When it's actually five, because Dr. Rea has left to go to LSU. Uh, Dr. Rea and and um, David Ballou were like like hand in glove for, right. for a long time, and uh, but LSU was able to get Rea away. <laughs> God, right. God, can you imagine the money that he's making? Because he's left. He was at Indiana, got pulled away to Alabama at, with a big old fat contract, I think, of like $400,000. Uh, and then for LSU to pull him away, you know, it has to be probably up towards a half mil. At least. And strength coaches are, you know, they are an important aspect of your program. Um, and he's not even a strength coach, though, if I'm correct. Yeah. He's more the he's the 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 wizard behind the computer. <laughs> yeah, he has all the uh, technical you know, data. All, 
yeah, the algorithms. Is that correct? Am, am I com yeah. com in this computer world? I got to make sure I got the vernacular right. Yes, you must run X number of sprints at this speed, at this angle, and uh, all of that stuff that geometry and. Well, they and track a kid. They nowadays they track a kid from from Monday through Saturday to give the determination of whether or not they need to pull back on his workout on Sunday or Monday because of what is it you know what is he expensed in through that week so there's a lot of technical aspect to today's game in terms of strength and conditioning and uh those guys are pretty darn good i mean that hurt indiana when they to when those guys jumped to alabama and you can't fault them because they got you know major program under nick saban but um you know, now uh, they've all been kind of reunited in some respects. Um, and it'll be interesting to see who all gets to go uh, to Alabama with Kellen. And um, I know most of the most of the offensive staff has been announced as going, but I'm not quite sure where it leaves the defensive side of the ball. So, well, you've got, uh, of course, Kane Womack <laughs> brought up from South yeah. Alabama. Uh, mm -hmm. ironically, who was the D.C. at Indiana when Kalen DeBoer was the O.C. at Indiana. How First of all, the irony of <laughs> five, five, not, and not at different times, but five guys that were on the Indiana staff in 2019 are now in the highest positions at Alla Effing Bama. It's yeah. mind-boggling. It is, and see even some for the Alabama fans that are, you know, kind of uh, like, wait a minute here. These guys are all from Indiana. <laughs> but here's the thing, and I keep saying this, and I say it all the time. Everything in life, I don't care if you're running a restaurant or a business, whatever, or a basketball team or a football team, right. you have to have the right people in the right positions. Right. While all these coaches are going there, not all of them are in the same position, specifically Kalen DeBoer. Yeah. Uh, because you also have Tom Allen, who's the D.C. at Penn State. Not exactly a, a – I'm not sure if that's a step down, to be honest with you. Right. Uh, so, they just – Indiana did not have the right people in the right positions in, in 2019, and that's all that there is to that. Yeah. Yeah, and from there it kind of deteriorated. It's like you said, just because of uh, transition, people leaving, having to hire one guy, and that guy having to come in and fit with the other eight, nine guys that are on the field. And there's a lot of dynamics that go into that. And it's about, put, you know, Bill Mallory always said, it's about the people around you, you know, hiring good people around you. And, uh, uh, sometimes that gets lost because somebody is known for X, Y, and Z, and you get wrapped up into thinking, oh, well, he knows of this, and then you hire him and find out he don't know nothing. And <laughs> and it was all oh, – Nothing. I love that. Yeah. I don't – out on the street talk, and, and he, he comes in, and he's not a great fit for your staff, you know, and things of that nature. But Kellen did, a, you know, give him all the credit in the world. He's moved up quite – quickly uh for him and uh just like you said for he's gonna make a shoot for anybody 10 I years ago he was at naia south dakota falls or whatever yeah, the hell sioux it was falls. he was at sioux and falls 10 years later he's at the pinnacle yeah the absolute pinnacle he's living in that world that he's probably questioning is this really happening <laughs> uh, i'm getting a gazillion the, dollars <laughs> but still the line from all the ladies out there He's living his best life. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's living his best life. And hey, some of these Indiana coaches are living their best life right now after the salaries were released. And and uh you looked at the salaries these guys were making at JMU, which was about what you would expect from that mid-major level. And now they come to uh Indiana and some of these guys are making good money. Uh, and kudos to Indiana for increasing that salary pool. And uh, get me started on that. <laughs> why not? You don't like the salary oh, pool? Because, no, it's not that. Um, it's because last night I was 
going answering I, I always try to answer everybody's questions that comment and it had more to do with basketball and everybody said oh Woodson's got to go yada yada I'm like going that ain't happening first of all I said he's got three years left on a contract that's going to cost you 12.6 million dollars you add that 12.6 million dollars to the 15 million dollars that they just paid Tom Allen that was reduced down from 20 million. Then you add that to the 10 million that they paid Archie Miller to leave, not to coach. <laughs> and you add that to the 4 million they gave Tom Crean, not to coach. That comes up to a big fat number of over $40 million in what's called dead money. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's I'll what get I you. was alluding Yeah, to. right, right. No, I get you on that one. But, uh, you know, uh, it's. But it is paying a million dollars more than it paid Tom Allen's staff. Yeah, and that always happens. It always happens that way. Um, you get you get one shot at it, so you ask for the you know you you ask for everything and negotiate what you can. And Signetti was able to get additional money for the salary pool, and uh, and he's paying these guys pretty well. Um, you know, the coordinators. I think Shanahan's making eight k, and Bryant's making over a mil. And uh, there's a good story. It's the same like Kellen DeBoer, 2009. He was <laughs> Brian Haynes was probably making fifteen thousand for me. <laughs> oh, this they, these guys have won the lottery. These guys have won the lottery <laughs> at Manchester. Now he's making one point one million at Indiana. So uh, I'm maybe call him and get say, "Hey, you got need a little percentage of that money there, Bryant." But uh, you know that's college football today. Guys making big money. I, I did, uh, did my uh, podcast the other night when I went to Ball State Division One back in 1995. I was making twenty four thousand as an assistant coach quarterbacks, but I also got a free car. So on top of that, that was the deal. But when I left there after we got fired in O two, I was I topped out at thirty seven thousand. That was back in 2002. So you transition now, those guys are making 95, 100,000, 150,000, even some of those mid majors. And that's just the way the salaries have gone. And uh, it's good for those coaches if they plan right, because what could happen? Uh, your coach wins, he moves on. And next thing you know, you think you're going with him and you're not. And that's. Well and these assistant coaches contracts they're they're only they're not the same length as as the head coach minimum these are two year deals most of them are two um there are some that are three i don't know what i think indiana's were all two de two year deals now and that includes the former assistants who are bidding being paid through next season i believe yeah, and it all depends i think some of them get paid through the end of june depending on where they were at on their uh, contract. Um, sometimes the contracts come out and it looks like they've got a two year deal and the actuality it's a year and a half because the way the fiscal calendar falls and things of that nature. But, you know, yeah, they, it, nowadays they get two year deals or three year deals. Uh, when I was coaching, I got one year deal, February to February. So if you had a bad season and the coach was going to make changes, uh, you're done in November, you run out of pay in February. So it's not always, I mean, some of these guys uh, run up against the bad, bad timing on the dates and such. So that's the hard part is seeing some guys go out of, out of a job that just played in a national championship game as a coach.